Well, welcome to the fifth episode of The Performing Songwriter. And before I introduce my guest, I want to read a quote by uh, Gene Shea. And those of you in Philadelphia uh, know Gene as a long, long time host of a folk show, uh, one of the founders of the Philly Folk Festival, amongst many other things. And of our guest, he said that he saw our guest uh, sing one night on his radio show, and I still haven't recovered. He's, he has the music, the charm, and the mystique about him that touches my heart and soul. I believe he's the next big thing to come out of the Philly scene. Yeah. So I'd like to introduce my guest, uh, Orion Freeman. Orion, how are you doing? Doing great, man. It's um, an honor to have the next best, best thing out of Philly. <laughs> What's my little show here? That's what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll tell you what, why don't we, maybe you could give us a brief, uh, kind of a summary of uh, your, you know, your singing, your uh, songwriting. Um, stylistically, you mean, or how, whatever you know, your history, I guess. Yeah. I'd say. Um, well, the history. I mean, it dates dates way back to high school when I heard Kurt Cobain. You know, realized I, I had to get a guitar. You know, it was, it was uh, whatever he was doing. You know, really resonated with me more than anything had. So I played guitar. You know, dating back to then, and singing and songwriting came a lot of years later. Mm -hmm. It was something that um, I couldn't couldn't do I tried to sing and it, it was it was a joke to put it bluntly so um, I just thought I was screwed I felt like I had this thing in me that wanted to come out but I didn't didn't feel like I had any skills and so little by little like I was able to you know make a few more squeaks here and there and and um, over the years it just I was able to refine it more and more but we only had a like you know a lesson or two over the years it was mostly just a process of self-discovery mm -hmm. yeah. okay. um, we're going to talk today about uh, words we're going to talk about words and songs and we're going to talk about words in performance what we said to the audience but before we get into any of that I'm going to ask you to uh, do one of your songs sure <clears throat> is, a, is a tune called where we're we going Thank you. 
that. Where we're going. Nice, nice yeah. song. Um, I notice you have uh, an island string guitar. Yeah. That's I what I started. Tell me a little bit about that. I'm just curious. Well, I have a couple beautiful old Gibsons at home and a, a 37 National Resonator, and, uh -huh. and they get way less love than, than this does. This is, I think, the least expensive guitar I have. Um, it's a it's a handmade piece. It's oh, it's wow. beautiful, but it's uh, it's not in the scheme of things. It's not that expensive. But I just love the tone. I mm -hmm. think it, it suits my voice. I think it suits the the, the style, uh, the mood that I that I bring with music. Uh, not only with a, a a quiet tune like that, but also um, when I get into more percussive stuff. I think uh -huh. it, it just the snap, the crack of the nylon. Just yeah, they have a good it, sound. It suits me. Yeah, I love it. Uh, a little bit about words. Uh, I guess the question would be. Um, <coughs> What process do you go through to get, you know, the best, interesting, whatever we want to call it, words in your songs? It's, um, I have to say it's much less of a conscious pro process than it is doing my best to tap into that sense of um, the unconscious. Mm -hmm. It's, um, I feel the best songs... Are, are the ones where there's not a whole lot of conscious thought put into it. It's mm -hmm. You're allowing something... Basically, it's like translating in some sort of intense feeling you have, whether it be, uh, you know, it's intense like, um, you know, frustration or anger with something like, you know, considered negative like that or, or something like joy. It's taking that, that buzz that you feel and um, and, you know, trying to sift through that that sense of blackness and 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 gather something of form from it so that that's my process mm -hmm. more more so than sitting down and looking at this word versus that word it's right. i i try not to give much thought afterwards uh -huh. once in a while I'll, I'll i'll go through it and and make some tweaks and say well i didn't say that quite the way i wanted mm -hmm. to uh, sometimes i'll use placeholders if i get stuck right and go back to it but the bulk of the tune the bulk of the words is usually you know it's it's uh, just a straight translation from, from feeling. Well, my guess is that, that what comes from the subconscious by d design is going to be more interesting Absolutely. than if you just like top of your head type kind of stuff. I think you can always tell when somebody is writing from their head. Uh -huh. I think it's, it, it sounds kind of trivial. Right. You know, when somebody, when, when you can tell it's coming from a place deeper from the heart or from, you know, from the, the, the very center of the, you know every cell, mm -hmm. it, it feels it feels like there's more leaps. You know, um, if sometimes there's um, lines that go together that that consciously you wouldn't necessarily put together, right. but afterwards you're like, oh wow, I love the juxtaposition of those two, and I could have never came up with that if just sitting here, you know, in, in, in a normal state. Well, um, someone called Sheila Davis who wrote the craft of lyric writing. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that book. She talks about the difference between figurative, yeah, I can even say it, figurative language and literal language, um, and you know they always say write songs conversation, conversational tone, but I think that can be taken too far. I mean, we're having a conversation, but I wouldn't make lyrics out of what we're, sure. <laughs> you know sure, what I'm sure. saying? And, and just just one other, just let me just say this, uh, for some people it might be helpful uh, as a resource kind of figure out, is there a better word that I can use than this word that I have? And that would be the famous, uh, I can't even say it, thesaurus. <laughs> thesaurus, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's it's a hard word. One. Anyway, <laughs> um, that's one tool that, that people could use uh, to kind of, uh, an example might be, uh, instead of saying, um, the soldiers are on the ship, the hands on the deck, that would be maybe an example of that kind of thing. So I'm going to do a song here before we uh, break for our Skype interview. And um, the funny thing about how I came up with this song is, uh, you, you know John Flynn, I, I'm thinking yeah. probably? Mm -hmm. I, I saw John at a concert and he one time he took his capo and put it upside down so that the top string was not covered, which meant he could play in D and, have, and use the top uh, the lowest string as for alternating bass. I've seen that, yeah. So I actually said, let me write a song so I can actually use that. <laughs> and I did, and this is it. Um, but eventually I got a capo that has a little notch in it, so I don't even need to turn it upside down. They're getting fancy these days, huh? <laughs> <laughs> anyway.
This is called uh, uh, Sailing Down This River. And the reason I'm singing it, there, I made one change, one little word, and I'm going to say at the end what that was, which I thought was a better. Going to sail down on this river, sail down to the sea, sail across the ocean, see some things i never seen. Never seen the Eiffel Tower Never seen the Taj Mahal Never seen the Himalayas Never seen anything quite that tall Gonna sail on down this river Gonna sail down to the sea Gonna sail across the ocean, see some things I've never seen. I've never seen the tombs of Egypt, put my footsteps in her sand. Gazed across the plains of Africa, or shook hands with a hungry man. Gonna sail down on this river Gonna sail down to the sea Gonna sail across the oceans See some things I've never seen I never walked the wall of China Or climbed the Filipino hill or got wet in, and I screwed up the words, <laughs> got wet in the forest of Brazil. When my journeys are all over And my days are nearly spent I will cherish these adventures And the new friends that I met Gonna row down this river Gonna sail down to the sea Gonna cross the oceans, see what things I've never seen. Mistakes and all, I'm not gonna do it over again. Anyway, what I went, I changed one word, which doesn't seem like a big deal. Maybe it isn't. And I, unfortunately, I changed it after it was on the record, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. And it's and it's the core, It's the one that goes. Um, uh, never walked the wall of China. Uh, never. Um, climbed the Filipino hills. Originally it was never walked the wall of China, never saw the Filipino hills. But to me, it's much more visual painting a picture to say climbing up the hill than looking at the hill. So I guess that's what I mean. That's an example, I think, of like the editing process, mm -hmm. uh, just finding a better word than um, they normally might, might yeah. think off your head. Anyway. That's an interesting case because it's it's the word you changed was saw, and you said there's a better representation of, of seeing that in your mind than yeah. using the word saw. <laughs> uh, we're going to do our um, Skype interview uh, today, and it's uh, Joe Crookston. You said you know Joe. Awesome guy. Yeah, awesome he is a great songwriter. Yeah. So we'll be back, uh, and here is Joe Crookston. Okay, our Skype guest today is from Ithaca, New York. Uh, he's a uh, storyteller in songs. Uh, he teaches uh, songwriting. Uh, he, he's a national performer. He has, uh, if I uh, count it right, he has five CDs. And he's uh, very involved with a movie that just came out called Blue Tattoo. Uh, Sing Out Magazine uh, said of our guest, with all the performers out there, uh, an artist has to go beyond good, and Joe does. So I'd like to welcome my guest, Joe Crookston. Hey, Joe. Uh, hi, Ray. How you good doing? Good to see you. 
And uh, I'm going to ask you to say, uh, um, I said a bunch of stuff about you. I'm going to ask you to say a little bit about how long you've been, uh, been writing, how long you've been uh, performing. Yeah. Well, it's great to be uh, doing this interview with you, Ray, because I pretty much started performing and like trying to get out there and playing in Philadelphia. And I was living at Apple Farm Arts and Music Center in, El El uh, in uh, Elmer, New Jersey. And I would drive up to Philadelphia to the Tin Angel. I think it was maybe Tuesday nights uh, for the open mic. And uh, that was the first place that I really went where I was like trying to get out in public and play my songs. And uh, that's where I met you. And I think it was 1994. That's about the time that I remember. Yeah, and just cutting my teeth at songs and getting in front of audiences. And you were writing the open mic monitor. And I think you were the first person to ever write an article about my music, which I thought was so cool. So I love it that you come back. Here we are again, you know, however many years later and we're doing the interview. So uh, I've been... I've been writing songs really pro probably since 1987, you know, or something like that, but really performing, getting out there, playing and touring. Um, I've been working very hard the last 10 years has been, you know, a great, great run for me. And uh, I feel like I'm just scratching the surface of what I can do and I'm just loving it. So, yeah, it's, uh, it'll never, I'll never stop, you know, and I'm always digging in. Um, we, uh, in, in this show now, that, um, as I, I think I mentioned you before we came on, uh, or, uh, Orion Freeman, uh, is our in-studio yeah. guest. And, uh, we were talking a little bit about, uh, uh, words, words in terms of, uh, the songs and also words, what we say to the audience in terms of the performing. So I wanted to ask you first, um, uh, after you've written like the first draft of a song and you're trying to edit it and get the best words mm -hmm. that you can. Do you have a certain uh, uh, process you go through? Or what? How do you? What's your strategy for making it? Making the words um, the most? Uh, um, I guess the best that they could be to say what you want to say uh, in the song. Yeah. So you're saying like sort of in the craft process, like after maybe the initial sketch is laid out, and and ha in, in the honing in the crafting phase. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, I'll, I'll just kind of go to the top of my head. Um, th the first couple things that come to mind with that are in, in a very short way, if I just went down a list of things that I think are extremely important for many songs is number one, is it short? <laughs> I think the idea of, you know, well, Bob Dylan has 12 verses and 18 verse songs, you know, and he can pull that off. Most of us can't, and I think that we're people are limited in attention span. I'm I'm limited in attention span, and I, I I think that working for me on a short song, make it very short, and try to work the words into that in a way that aren't it's not cluttered. Um, for me, it, it forces me to come up with more interesting, clear ways to say things that are more focused. Uh, so number one, super short is the song short. It, you know, that would be a, one of the guidelines for me in terms of making good choices of words. Um, I would say the number, uh, another one would be, do I enjoy the way the sounds come out of my mouth? I would say if I'm saying, one example that I, I think about a lot, there's a Tom Waits song. Um, if I said this sentence, uh, it is late September and it's evening, and there is a full moon hanging in the sky. That's, that's a long sentence with a lot of words. And I'm painting a picture there, so you get this idea. It's late September, there's a harvest moon, it's a full moon, and, 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 and there's a, you know, the moon hanging in the sky. And there's a, there's a Tom Waits song called Grapefruit Moon. And... That title has always been very powerful for me in terms of taking what could be a long rambling description of something and turning it into a short musical lyrical gem, Grapefruit Moon. Now, if I could say Grapefruit Moon in a song and move on, I've said it with two beautiful words that paint this amazing picture without all the clutter. So that would be an example to me of like what I go for. I'm, I'm always looking how to take a long sentence and turn it into grapefruit moon. <laughs> you know, that would be an example. Okay. 
Um, what you do a tune here for us? All right, I'll sing a song here uh, called Black Dress. And uh, sometimes when I write a song, I like to give myself parameters or rules that I have to stick within. And it forces me to come up with new things. And the, the two that I gave myself for this is I wanted it to be um, a cinema, like a cinematography. I wanted it to be a film that unfolded over eight minutes long. And so that it was just kind of like, how, how can I write a song that's a time sequence that every moment leads to the next moment as if it, if it, as if it were a film? And uh, so I, it's called Black Dress. The woman alone in the black dress With the table in the corner with the tall glass Sipping on her wine Man, she's looking fine I'm across the room a star-struck man I'm in love with a woman with a ring on her hand I'm in love with a woman with a ring on her hand Would you look at those eyes of amber Gazing all around the room I'm walking over her way I could love her any day She can't melt my heart Nobody can I'm in love with a woman With a ring on her hand I'm in love with a woman With a ring on her hand And now she's looking up at me And grinning I'm grinning right back at her I sit down in the empty chair A little nervous but I like it here Good love is hard to understand I'm in love with a woman with a ring on her hand I'm in love with a woman with a ring on her hand Say to her across the table I've been thinking about you and me And the hard times that we've been through I'm still glad that I married you It was the best thing I ever did Giving you that wedding band I'm in love with a woman with a ring on her head I'm in love with a woman with a ring on her hand. I'm in love with a woman with a ring on her hand. Yeah, I like that. Um, I wanted to ask you, uh, you were instrumental in getting a documentary uh, called, um, what did I, I lost it, uh, oh, Blue, yeah, Tat Blue Tattoo. Tattoo. Maybe yeah. you could talk a little bit about that. Yeah, well, uh, in, uh, let's see, was it, um, no, it was 2008, I received a, a grant um, to travel around the Finger Lakes region of New York, so there's 11 Finger Lakes. And basically the, the project was for me uh, for about 14, 15 months to just basically, what do you want to be with, you know, when you grow up? I want to be Woody Guthrie. I want to go out in search of stories. I want to go out and interview people and find stories. So the, what I was doing is was hearing stories from people and then writing original songs based on what I learned. And one of the people that I met when I was traveling was a woman, Dina Jacobson. And Dina... Uh, she was 87 at the time, and I basically got to know her and her daughter. Dina was in Auschwitz for three years. She was a Holocaust survivor, 
Um, she came across the Atlantic on a boat with her baby, uh, Connie. So that her, she had a newborn baby and she ended up in Elmira, New York is where she settled and started a new life. And basically I wrote this song blue tattoo, um, for her and the song, uh, it was very difficult to write in some ways because I didn't want to be this white guy with a guitar who was trying to tell this story about this woman and who was in Auschwitz. So all of these things that I'm not like able to really identify with, you know, and felt maybe dis I didn't want to dishonor her, you know. I ended up telling writing the song as if it's a conversation between Connie her daughter when Connie's like four years old and Dina as a mother about 28 years old. So it's a conversation between a four-year-old daughter and a 28-year-old mother. And the, and the four-year-old girl is saying, mama, where were you born? And, and where's your family? And who's your mama? Like she's asking her these questions. And one side, since we're talking songwriting here, for me, there was this moment where as soon as I realized the song was going to be literally a conversation back and forth between the mother and the daughter. I, as the narrator, was invisible. I wasn't Joe Crookston singing about them. They were telling their own story. And once I came up with that, the song unfolded, you know, fairly quickly. Uh, and, it, and I played it for her. Some filmmakers discovered the song, um, heard it, and on May 18th, it was premiered at the uh, Buffalo Film Festival, and it's being shown around the country quite a bit. Um, it's going to be at different theaters, and it's called Blue Tattoo, uh, Dina's story, Joe's song, and it's uh, based on her life and my relationship with, with her. So uh, she passed away uh, three months ago. She, she came to the opening of the show. She came to the film premiere. There were 750 people there. And she basically said, I'm done. I, I don't want to tell my story anymore. I'm going to let this tell my story, this film tell my story. And she passed away like three weeks later. Okay. So a uh, beautiful woman. And uh, I'm honored to be part of that, you know, story. And, uh, we'll be looking for it in our area. And I understand it's also in DVD. People can uh, order. It is. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, this uh, show is called The Performing Songwriter. And part of the reason I started, because I think a lot of songwriters don't pay enough attention to the performing end of it. And um, the part that we're talking about this week is basically what do we say to the audience uh, to make, you know, keep them involved, keep them emotionally uh, interested in what you're doing. So I was going to ask you to, uh, you know, um, what you think about that and maybe how you do that. Yeah, I think a lot about that. I, I, I really value... Um, my audience is basically what I would say. And they've paid some money to be at a show and they are looking for a gift from me <laughs> and I'm looking for a gift from them. I would say that I think of a show as a trance that I enter into with my audience. It's a bubble that is created from the moment I walk on stage and Anything that I do that breaks that bubble. So if I'm on stage futzing around, talking about random things that I, the traffic on the way and how I'm stressed out and how, you know, it, I think that for me as a performer, if I'm not clear about why I'm up there and I'm rambling, or if I'm, if I'm not focused with what I'm trying to give my audience, it feels like it breaks that trance. So I, I would say that for me, I use a lot of humor when I'm on stage and sometimes it's a setup. Like I would say that my shows become very, um, well, this roller coaster ride of humor and deep meaning and high energy and very focused energy. And uh, for me that riding that wave, I, if I'm playing something really big and upbeat, I will come down to the most minimal moment. And I may start that next song without even an intro. I think the idea of ever starting a, a song, this song is about, if that is ever part of your show, <laughs> it should be erased completely out of your show. This song is about, I think that a way to introduce a song is to tell a story. I was sitting at the kitchen table with my grandfather who was 95 years old. His name was Joe Ganap. He was said, hey, Joe, let's go out in the garage and drink some Schlitz. You know, we sat in lawn chairs in the garage and he told me about his time based on Tinian Island in the South Pacific during World War II. 
And I, I learned that he, him and his battalion guys built the runways that the Enola Gay took off from when it flew over Hiroshima. Boom, into a song, right? Not this song is about blah, blah, blah. In a way, that takes you out. I, I want to be in the story. So I'm sitting at the table with my grandfather. So I think that, um, that that's very important to me. Um, also, again, like the songs, I think the intros need to be well thought out, short and quick, and then have purpose to move right into a song. Um, I'm sure there's lots of other things I can say about it. Do you have any questions about that? Um, no, other than um, I think I agree with you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm going to ask you to uh, do one more song for us. Yeah, I'll do another song. Um, you know, I'm going to do this song, um, another kind of strumming song. This is called The Nazarene. It's a song I really... You know, what I'd say is uh, with the song that I just played first, the Black Dress song, and then The Nazarene... One of the things that I think about when I'm starting to write a song is just to keep it super simple. Just be as simple as I can, even if it's just a like I'm writing an old kid's song and a folk song or something like that. I think the idea of not complicating things uh, at the beginning is really important to me. This is a song that felt like it started that way. I was just trying to say exactly what was true for me and think about my life growing up as a child and say it very simply and straightforward without getting complicated about it. And this song came out pretty easily. And now that it's recorded with harmonies and background, it's very lush. It's a very lush song, but it started very simple. And, and it's called The Nazarene. coaches baseball and I am on the team mom thinks she's Jesus Christ the Nazarene we go to visit her on Tuesdays go riding in the car down the hall into the room where the other prophets are Oh, the rosary, she says Did you see it turn to gold? And I shake my head and answer Yes, it was a miracle Is it true? Is it true? Did it turn to gold? in front of you and are you lost in hell is it a heavenly sign because i know you say that everything is divine da -da -da. watching TV and I'm learning minor chords and mom says she's coming home and won't go back there no more St. Francis in the front yard with the bluebird on his hand and she says he comes to talk to her it's all part of the master plan. Is it true? Is it true? Did the bluebird come to talk to you? And are you lost in hell? Is it a heavenly sign? Because I know. Everything is divine. Da -da -da. Da -da -da. There's baseball on the radio, 
And I'm playing Harvest by Neil Young. Mom says singing songs like that, you can save everyone. Is it true? Is it true? Could I sing a song that might save you? And are you lost in hell? Is it a heavenly sign? Cause I know you say everything is divine. Dad coaches baseball. Now I am on the team. Mom thinks she's Jesus Christ the Nazarene. I remember that song. You, uh, I'm pretty sure you've written that some time ago, correct? My yeah, name. it was five years ago. I wrote that song. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, I wanted to mention um, on uh, through your website uh, and I also on YouTube, uh, you have a number, uh, uh, quite a number of videos of you performing, and I would really recommend people uh, to take a look at those in terms of just to kind of see what you do because um, you're a dynamic performer as well as a great songwriter, uh, and I think that would be really helpful for people uh, to do. Yeah. And I also want to mention uh, I mentioned I meant to do it before, but you in addition to do. Uh, your music, you're also uh, 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 an artist. And I think in the background, that's one of your paintings, I assume. Oh, yeah. I think that's one of the ones I'm working on right now. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And uh, I do. I, I enjoy... I think, for me, painting is very uh, relaxing. And it's also... It kind of informs my writing. I think, like, The Nazarene, the song I just played, I have a, a painting that I did about eight years ago called The Nazarene. And in some ways, the imagery in the song is also in the painting. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that sometimes when I when I write a song, I'm I'm hoping and imagining that someone will get this vivid, colorful imagery in their mind that's very picturesque, that has almost like, oh, I see the painting. I can I can see it. And so I think that they they inform each other for sure. But I, I love painting because in some ways I don't really I don't, when I'm performing songs, I want the audience to understand. I want to connect with my audience. When I'm painting, I don't care at all. I'm just like, well, I'm just painting what I feel. I'm putting it on there. And if you like it, great. If you don't, if you understand it, great. But I'm not really trying to communicate to an audience when I'm painting. I'm just trying to uh, put some images on, on canvas that are important to me. So it's a kind of a different process. I like, it frees me up to just be, uh, you know, do what I want to do. Gotcha. Um, yeah. What's the best way for people to, uh, you know, learn about you, where you're going to be playing, get your CDs, that type of thing? Yeah. Um, well, my my website is my name, joecrookston.com, and it's C-R-O-O-K-S-T-O-N. So joecrookston.com, and if you go there, you can see some paintings. You can the blue uh, blue tattoo DVD is there. Um, there's some videos, and just like a lot of people, that's where you find where I'm going to play shows and. Um, I'm traveling around a lot, and I'm loving doing what I do, and uh, I have shows all over the country. I go to Ireland quite a bit, and Canada now, and um, so I'm having a good time doing this. I feel extremely grateful <laughs> that I'm able to uh, squeak out a living doing this, um, but I love it, and I'm just going to keep plugging away, and uh, thanks thanks for supporting what I do. And you know, Like I said, how many years ago you wrote that first article about me, and it was like one of those moments where I was like, gave me just a little bit of strength to keep going you know every time one of those comes along and people support what you do and it's like i you know it's not an easy culture to be a songwriter doing what i do and what we do as troubadours you know and uh thanks for supporting it well thank you very much Jeff, for coming on uh yeah. the show here and uh, uh people should look at your website see where you're going to be playing if it's near where they live uh definitely they ought to go out okay great okay. thanks thanks ray it's uh, good to see you and uh Good luck out there with all the songwriting, and uh, we'll see you again down the road. Okay. Okay. Joe Crookston, he's a, he's a great songwriter. He's, uh, yeah. he's one, one of the best I've come across. Yeah. He's, yeah. For sure. Okay. So, I'm going to have you do another tune, and we're going to come back and talk a little bit about performing. 
Sounds good. Um, real quickly, this is this is just a tune about growing up in uh, in a culture that that felt very devoid of role models of uh, you know of of people and ideas that that felt worthy of of attention. You know, something that, that would instill something good in you. So therefore, you go off on your road looking for something to make you happy or bring you joy and um, a lot of false starts. This is called delusional epiphanies. Hey mister, you a star Bet your little law six call out Tell me what you say if I play my cards right Think maybe you could make me want to Cause I noticed that you had a big shine of rain Bobby dog, you're on the black Lincoln limousine Don't no answer to no one in your mansion in the hills You must be the happiest man alive Hey princess of love
style or styles you, you kind of have uh, you kind of go across some different genres don't you yeah um, I think that people always ask you know what, what kind of music do you play that's a very common occurrence and the easiest way I've, I've thought to describe it is just soul folk because I think mm -hmm. it's folky at the core that's my roots but um, it does come from a, a place that, that feels like you know it's coming an extension of my soul my heart um, but yeah, I mean, I've, I've lived all over. I've lived in the, the islands. I've lived in, um, in Central America. I've lived on the West Coast, in the mountains of Colorado. And so everywhere I've been, I felt like I picked up different flavors, um, both with the, you know, with the way I speak and, and also musically you hear different, different stuff, what different people are doing. Um, and I grew up on everything from, from folk to blues to reggae to hip hop to jazz. So. I feel that, that what I do is a synthesis, mm -hmm. my, my version of all those things put together, because I didn't want to have to pick one. Right. You know, I don't want to be a jazz player or a blues player. I, I really enjoy bringing everything to the table. Well, you know, I've noticed uh, in the last year or so, this, in, in terms of popular music, there's quite a, there's a number of people that just that play acoustic guitar. Not that they don't have bands too. Um, I think Ed, was the same Ed Sheeran is one of them. Something Definitely. like that. He was on the Today Show and, okay. and playing him and his acoustic guitar yeah. and all these teenage girls yelling like yeah. he's the Beatles, you know? <laughs> and, and seriously, you know, yeah. your music, I mean, I can see you on Saturday Night Live show. Solo acoustic? Yeah. Or if, right. you want to, yeah. <laughs> and if you want a band, you have a yeah, band. Yeah, I'd rather have the band, but, but <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I feel that, I mean, what I do is, is, is about a song first, for uh -huh. sure, and I, I like to think the songs stand up by themselves, but if anyone's heard the, the, the new record, it's it's on a whole other level it's you know me plus 26 of my uh -huh. favorite, best friends <laughs> so it's a lot of different textures and all okay. but I think it works good both ways uh, I want to talk a little bit about we always talk about something about performing yeah. and about um, what what we say to the audience to keep them engaged in addition to our songs keeping them engaged and is that something that, that you think about um, before you go out it, it is um, but maybe not the same way other folks do um, it, it's it's almost similar to what I said about songwriting and crafting songs. Um, I feel that if I'm engaged with with my core, with 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 my heart, and not you know engaged with my mind running a thousand miles a minute, mm -hmm. then then I can I can do a better job at being there in that moment and and taking whatever is is being offered to me in that moment and and using it. As, as banter or as, as a means to uh, communicate or connect with people. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, more times than not, I will have a story or two um, specifically maybe that happened that day or, or over the course of a tour that I, I want to highlight. Um, but I think my favorite shows are the ones where I'm just truly connected with what's going on right in that moment. I, I always encourage people to shout stuff out and ask questions. and that I, I really enjoy that because that that opens the the evening up to something that's happening right then it's not about a story about before mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. um, and sometimes the moment can connect to a story that happened in the past for sure but um, I, I really really enjoy um, that that sense of aliveness that comes with um, with having the the audience really be involved and feel like they're a part of the 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 performance exactly yeah yeah and I think if that's the case, what, what you say is going to come naturally. The, and that's the hope, yeah. yeah. Like I said, if I'm in my head, which some nights I am, uh -huh. and it feels jittery. It feels like I'm just telling stories to tell stories. Right. I don't feel connected to that. Mm -hmm. But when I do, um, I think they, they're they able to feel more connect, connected as well. And and it, it really creates those moments where people come up afterwards and they say, wow, you know, like, I, I feel like I like lost myself in, in, in a little... Um, a little 
vortex of some kind. So, and that that's what I'm hoping to do. I'm hoping to create an experience where people leave saying, "Whoa, like what just happened? That uh-huh. was, I, I went somewhere." Yeah, you know, I want to I want to have people go on a little journey with me for sure. I wanted to. Um, uh, I was looking yesterday on the internet for um, resources for performing skills. Didn't find too much, but I did find a uh, a book that I actually I da- I bought download, which I thought was pretty cool. So if people um, performers out there want to get some ideas on performing skills, it's called Singing Live, and it's by uh, Susan Anders. And I actually emailed her and said I'd like to uh, you know talk about your book and maybe say some things, and, and it's really good. And it's like it was about ten eleven bucks down download ebook. Mm-hmm. And I uh, just wanted to mention some a few things that she had said. Um, uh, well, she said she suggests, and and um, I think yourself, for you, you probably don't do this. I think you can pretty much do it naturally, and that is practice. When you practice your songs, also practice what you're going to say, or at least think about it, um, which is something that more that I would have to do because I. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know that feeling too, man. Don't worry. <laughs> um, yeah. And also that you know what you say depends on the type of um, venue you're in. You know, a bar Indeed. versus a coffee house versus a stadium. I, I'm waiting for my stadium gig, by the way. Yeah, and yeah. Let you know what know, I mean. Let me know about that. I'll, <laughs> I'll open for you. <laughs> um, and basically, just you know, kind of creating creating the mood. Um, one of the things she says is to, uh, how many times she heard people say, "Well, hi," in the beginning. How are you doing tonight? Mm-hmm. And maybe there's a better way of saying that. Saying that. I remember, I uh, can't remember his name. He's a songwriter. If I, I'm sure you know him if I can think of it. And he was doing a thing on performance one time, and he said, don't say, how are you doing tonight? Because, Ashley, you don't give a shit. <laughs> you know? So. Um, Did he have better advice? Uh, not <laughs> he just s- said, I, don't do that. <laughs> don't say it, yeah. Yeah, you do hear that all too often. <laughs> um... Okay, this is a song I wrote um, take this off. Uh, for uh, my wife before she was my wife. And the reason I'm doing it, in terms of going back to the words, um, uh, analogies are used a lot in songs. And, uh, and this has a number, especially in the first verse. It's called, a, uh, um, what is it called? She, she loves me most of all. And I was saying in the break when we were uh, listening to the Skype interview that I don't think I've gone through a whole song in these shows without screwing it up. So here's your your chance. (laughs) She's like Christmas morning. She's like the moon shining through the trees. She's like a robin in springtime. She's everything to me Her smile greets me when I'm lonely Her smile can the heights rid it up <laughs> Soothing voice can ease my longing She's like a new heart when you're old She's all I need to get me through the longest night She brings me hope to know that everything's all right. She helps me stand when I'm about to fall. She gives me love most of all. I'm just a simple man. I'll never ask for much. Just a hand to hold, gentle kiss, a caring touch. I can't give her gold or silver, but I'll give her what I can. Peaceful life, a deep devotion, a kind and thoughtful loving hand. All I need to get me through the longest night She brings me hope to know that everything's alright She helps me stand when I'm about to fall She gives me love most of all Sometimes 
Sometimes I think that I'm just dreaming. She's not here, but I'm just sleeping. But when she kisses me, I'm awake. Cause I can be her loving eyes, keep me believing. She's all I need to get me through the longest night. She brings me hope to know that everything's alright. She helps me stand when I'm about to fall. She gives me love most of all. all. She gives me love most of all. She's like Christmas morning. The line I like. Maybe the best line I ever wrote was, she's like Christmas morning. That's an interesting way to end the tune. It's an anticip- It's like anticipating her coming, being with her, without saying those words. Yeah. So I was like that. That's a good one. Anyway, um, you, you're coming out with a new CD. Came out, yeah, just uh, a few weeks old. Um, worked, Talk a little bit about it. Worked on it for, for a year. It was the, the biggest event of my entire life to date. Um, I mentioned briefly earlier there's um, a lot of a lot of world class musicians on it. Twenty twenty seven including me. a um, bunch of people from friends from Philly, friends from the road, um, that I knew I wanted to, to highlight. A bunch of incredible guys from up in New York where it was recorded. Um, but yeah, it's it's called the Divine Game and it's it's the encapsulation of of my entire life to date basically. Um, it's it's kind of split up in a couple halves the, the first half representing the game and the second half the divine and um, you know it was it was my best my best attempt at, at, at putting forth uh, a full picture of what life feels like to me you know being the the moments that are, are very easy and carefree and and childlike and mm-hmm. then and then the, the the part of this that feels intensely serious and like you know deals with things like life and death and um, I, I feel like feel like I'm I'm pretty happy with the way it came across. I say that I'm, I say pretty happy. I'm, I'm thrilled actually. I've, <laughs> I've, never, I've never done anything in my life that's better than than this, as far as I'm concerned. So I'm pretty thrilled to have this as an offering to the world. Finally, well, where, where can people get it? You can get it uh, my website orionfreeman.com, um, or else you know iTunes, CD Baby. It's pretty much all over the the internet. But uh, hey, if, if anyone's in the New York or Philly area, the big release shows are coming up. Uh, 828 in New York City at Rockwood. And um, the 30th of August in, at the New Leaf um, the New Leaf Club in uh, Bryn Mawr, Pennsylvania, okay. in the main line. Okay. I'm going to have you do one more song, and is, is this on your uh, new CD? Yeah, well, let's see. Um, should I do a, a little lyrical thing or something with a little you more can, bounce? Whatever or? you want to do. It's, no, it's cool. No, uh, no suggestions here. Nope. What does the uh, listening audience think? <laughs> uh, call in right now. <laughs> yeah. Five five five. <laughs> All right, I'll I'll keep it lyrical then, since you know, it se- seems like a folky sort of show. Um, yeah, this is this is the last tune on the record, and uh, it's it's one of my favorites. But at first, I didn't feel like there was a place for it because it, it's got. It's got such an open heart to it, where a lot of the other songs kind of touch on like a, a pensive, the pensive side or um, the humorous side versus just the you know blast me open sort of side. So um, I found a place at the at the very end of the record, almost like a, a hidden track. <laughs> Then 
evening came the rain No nights while the day Your nose up Wouldn't have hit things Still it's alright Now came the sun Like a heaven white dove They sang a song That needed to be sung She said it's alright It's alright How was a witness when insanity opened a business and set up shop? Well, my foot alone was still is all right. Then it trailed behind me, selling itself for the laws from Philadelphia, clear to California, still it's alright. I'll try to eat or sleep or go away my tendency to let loneliness lay with me all day and night. I was consumed by two dimensional views. Ryan Freeman, thank you very much for coming on. Those uh, the songs are wonderful. My pleasure. Thank I you. agree with agree with Gene Shea. All right. Uh, and <laughs> also, <It's> open. <laughs> that's right. I also want to thank uh, my Skype guest, Joe Crookston. Uh, we'll be back in a couple of weeks. I just want to say we're going to have uh, a young songwriter who's very good from South Jersey. Her name's Camille Peruto. I don't know if you're familiar with her. Uh, and then uh, Mark Douglas Garado, who's um, out of town and should be a real good show. So uh, we'll see you then.